today we do have a treat for you. We have a small panel of mothers and mom-like figures. Just because you yourself don't have children doesn't mean you're not a mom figure to somebody, okay? Uh, we have ladies in different stages of life, and our goal is to encourage you and inspire you through the Word of God on your journey in motherhood. If you're not a mom today, like you're a dude, please <laughs> honor the ladies today, sit through this service, encourage them, and trust me, you will get something out of this as well, all right? We want to take some time today to encourage those who are moms, but we also want to talk to everybody in here today because you are part of a mom's village. So let's introduce our panel of lovely ladies. Each of these ladies are a full-time staff member here at Family Church. So ladies, uh, please state your name, the stage of life that you're in, your age and or ages of your children. Okay, so hello everybody. My name is Adriana. I am 28, <laughs> gonna be 29 next week. Well, just, just saying, yeah. Uh. <laughs> I am recently divorced and I do not have any children yet. Yet. <laughs> Good morning, I'm Ashley, I'm 42. My husband is Breeze, he serves on the security team and we have a daughter mm. named Brentley. <laughs> Brentley is four and we have a son that we call Bear Bear, he's two. <laughs> if you have any children under five, let me see your hands. Who has children under if five? If you're in the chat room, type snack. If you know, you know. <laughs> snack? Yes. What are they typing? Snack. Snack? The like kids snacks? are all about the snacks. Oh, gotcha. Snacks. All right. I, I enjoy snacks. <laughs> I'm out of the snack game. <laughs> I'm Cynthia, or everybody calls me Cindy, after Mike's wife. Ooh. I'll be 42 in two weeks. Yes. 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 I have three old. kids. I have hey, an eight-year-old, an almost 16-year-old, and an 18-year-old, and it doesn't get better with the snacks. <laughs> Anybody got teenagers or older kids, older teens, older adults? All right. My name is Tiffany. I am 27. I am a single mother to a 10-year-old child named Paris. Yeah. All right. Anything? Any single moms up in here? Yeah. All right. Yeah. My name is Cecilia. Most people call me Ceci. I am 29 years old. I am a single, and I am also the Fam Kids Director here at Family Church. Do I have any singles in the house this morning? <laughs> and all the rest of you that didn't identify, shame on you. <laughs> all right, what about empty nesters? Any empty nesters in the house? Kids are grown, gone. All right, yes, yeah. we honor you today. I see you, Ms. <laughs> All right, so we want to have some fun with this. It may be somewhat chaotic. It may be somewhat disorganized. Oh. I have some questions that I want to ask the panel, and then they're going to just kind of candidly give me their responses. So let's start with question number one. Why do you think it is important to be in a village? First, let's define village. Really, the village is anybody who can somehow impact your life and the life of your children. It could be... I mean, really, anybody. I mean, there's actually a more detailed question into that later. <laughs> but just keep that in your head, because I don't want you guys thinking, like, what is she talking about? Right now? <laughs> right. So, one of the main reasons for me that it's important to be in a village is because we're not meant to do life alone. Whether you're a parent or not, you're not meant to hibernate. Right. We're not bears. And even bears <laughs> tend to live in a den with other bears. But being a mom can be lonely. I remember having my daughter, she's 18 years old now, and Michael and I got married really young, and there was no, we had no friends that had kids, and our family all worked full time, everybody was doing their own things, even though I had sisters that had children, you know, you all have your own lives, you're busy. So, like, I'd be home all day with Caitlin, mm -hmm. and then eventually I had Michaela. It was hard to, like, Figure your own groove. It was hard to think like, how can I do this well? Because when you become a mom, you don't necessarily want to lose out on who you are. Like, you don't want to be known as just so-and-so's mom. You still want to be known as your name. Like, I still want to be Cindy, even though I have three kids. And even in the Bible, it talks about how a three-strand cord is not easily broken. When you have somebody around you to support you, to cheer you up, to be like, girl, you still look good in your sweats and your messy ponytail. <laughs> you know, 
It helps you get through the day a little easier than just sitting at home thinking, is this it? Yeah. Well, you'd have to have a friend that thinks you look good in your sweats. Dude, I look great in my sweats. She looks I'm great. Well. I think she looks well. good in sweats. Every Thursday. I didn't say she didn't. I'm just saying you got to have somebody in your village that thinks you do. Right. <laughs> Truth Anybody else? Importance of being in a village. Anybody else? Well, um, for myself, I'm at a different stage of life right now. I don't have children just yet. Um, but for me, the importance of being a part of a village, for me, is to learn. Is to learn from every single person on this stage who have children or who are older than me, who have gone through life a little bit differently mm -hmm. than I have, um, and to be open to what they have to say, um, as well as making sure that I am learning so that I can teach other people who are in my village. So that's, good. that's the importance of that's good. me being in village right now. So let's go ahead and move on to question number two. Does your village have to be close friends and family? Like, does it have to be someone that you knew and that you respect them and honor them? Or can anybody be part of your village that helps raise your kids? Right, let me uh, jump in here real quick. Go ahead. <laughs> Short answer is no. Anybody really can help make up your village. When I was growing up in Brooklyn, I lived in the same neighborhood. My dad... Brooklyn in the house. <laughs> my whole family, because I don't know about you, but my family doesn't move. They migrate. We're kind of like Canadian geese. So my whole family lived on our block. And every once in a while, my mom would send me around the corner to the bodega to get some ham for her beans. Yes. And so, of course, before I walked out, I got the whole speech. Don't talk to nobody. Don't look at nobody. Go straight to the store and come back. But, all right, mom, go so I get around the corner, and wouldn't you know it, the very first apartment building, there'd be a lady named Celia, hanging Celia. out, sitting on the stoop, <laughs> and she'd have to say hi, and how's the family, and the whole nine, and then she'd give me the speech. Okay, be safe, don't talk to anybody, don't look at anybody, <laughs> go to the store and go home. And as I would get to the store, I'd meet like two or three other people, say hi, tell them how the family is, the same speech, to the store and back. Don't talk to nobody. Don't talk to nobody. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you talk to like, like five nobody. people. Yeah, exactly. Well, say, say it in Spanish how you were actually told it. Yeah. Wow. Say it in Spanish. No, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> <Me, me. Yeah. laughs> but it was all the time. Like, I never once felt unsafe. Right. And none of those people were part of my close village. I can't, other than Celia, because I knew her my whole life, I can't tell you what the names of any of the people I spoke to were. But they were still part of that village that they were all looking out for each other. Yeah. Like, we weren't related, we weren't friends, but in the neighborhood, you all kind of just made sure that everybody was good. And it wasn't weird. Like, all my friends had similar experiences. Anytime yeah. they went out, there was always somebody like, I'm watching you. you know? <laughs> I could, I could kind of agree with that, because as we were actually planning this panel for Mother's Day, um, Miss Cindy shared with us when the topic of prayer came up about how she prays over her children. And how I pray over my daughter is on my way to work, I just pray in the car. But she explained that she grabs Caitlin and she speaks the words of the Bible over her. And faith comes by hearing. So I feel like if you start at a small age, so Paris is 10, and every morning after the day that she told me, I would grab her and speak, she's the head and not the tail, above and ever beneath. Right. And I say anything she sets her little hands to, because they're small, <laughs> will prosper. And I see a change in her spirit when she's on her way to the bus. She seems more happy. And now she comes to me and she's like, hey, mom, come on, it's time to pray. And <laughs> so you it. were praying for her for her day, but she wasn't in the car. Yeah, she didn't hear it. Gotcha. She so, wouldn't. But now you're doing it with her because oh. of something you learned yes. here at Family Church. Mm -hmm. cool. Miss Cindy, right. Miss Cindy, you're a part of my village. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to tag on to that um, question. Um, so for me, while it's great to have people who are close to you in your village, but what if you're that person who isn't there yet? What if you wouldn't consider yourself somebody who has the village just yet, but is something that you're working toward? I believe that... Um, Say there's somebody that you follow on YouTube or somebody that you follow on, on Instagram, a blog mm -hmm. or a book that you read off after um, that has to do with life or parenting or marriage. 
Um, I believe that those authors or those YouTube people who are speaking specifically to your situation can be a part of your village. Although not in close proximity, it's still somebody that you can connect with and meet you at the place that you are. That's so true. that's my That's good, that. Sophie. I take advantage of that because I have a, I love to read and I have a couple authors. Um, Ashley Willis is one. She wrote a book called Peace Pirates. What was her name again? Uh, Ashley Willis. Ashley Willis. Peace Pirates. Ashley. 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 <laughs> and then there's um, Becky Keith. And she wrote a book, The Best Mom for the Job. And the thing that I love about both of them is they are honest, they're open, they're transparent, they're relatable. And in those moments when I'm feeling like a crazy mom and does anybody else feel this way, while I do have people in my village that I can speak to, it's great to have those resources. Yeah. One of them I actually found on the Bible app by doing a devotional. Oh. And then I loved it so much. I was like, what else did this woman write? So there's <laughs> a lot cool. of resources out there. That's mm -hmm. nice. So let's say that... You, all right, so a village can be multiple things, right? It can be your family unit, it can be your job, it could be a career, it could be all, all sorts of things that, that is your environment in which you live that impacts the way that you're doing life. Yeah. If you are in a village that you don't like, it's toxic, it's not healthy, or it's just not going where you want it to go, yeah. can you change your village or are you stuck there? Can you move or are you stuck in your village? Yes. You can move. You are not stuck there. <laughs> yes. uh, it takes being, I believe it takes being intentional. It takes being willing to change. And it takes courage. Um, back a couple years ago, I was in a situation where part of, a significant part of my village just wasn't conducive to my being a mother at that time. With um, One of my children was one, and one was about to be three. And I wasn't able to spend a lot of time with them. And well, I Well, let's just be, just be transparent. She was the proprietor of Outback <laughs> here in Middletown. She yeah. owned Outback. Yeah. Yeah. And she was a lot of time out of the house, not a home. Lot of Long days, early yeah. mornings, late nights, and it wasn't, it wasn't working. And I knew that I had reached my, what I wanted for success there. I reached that, and at that point, and I want to share uh, my life scripture is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean into your own understanding. In all your ways, all your ways, acknowledge him, right. and he will direct your path. So at that point, I said, Lord, I'm, I'm finished here. Where do you want me? And that's when he led me to family church. Yay. So I do believe <laughs> when you do trust him and yeah. you yeah. listen and you obey, he yeah. will yeah. guide you to where you are. And now I'm, I'm, I'm changing. I'm thriving. And I get more time with my children. Oh, we can't say you're thriving. We can't, we can't go that far. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. She's thriving. She's it's doing okay. great. You're thriving. You're thriving, yes. Anybody else? We're good? Um, I want to say real quick. Okay. For me, I came to a point in my life where I had um, new dreams, new desires, new things that as you learn, as you grow from the people mm -hmm. in your village, I, I started dreaming again. I started envisioning what my life could be. Okay. And so then I had to look back and say, okay, what were the decisions I had previously made? And am I headed in the right direction? Like I was going this way, but now I want to go over there. So sometimes you just have to shift. And there's certain things that you just, you have certain conversations and certain decisions that you have to make. But like Ashley said, I think just trusting in God and having those conversations with God, including him in part of your decisions, including him in where you want to go and what you want to do, I think is the best way to figure out what needs to change, what doesn't. And then for me, what helped me the most when I made a change was connecting with the people that were still in my village. So yes, I was leaving certain people and moving away from certain people, but there was other people that I was like, I'm calling you every day, I'm sending you a text because they were there and they were there to support me. So I think that's important. Make sure you have a good support system. So, so let's, let's just stop, pause on that one for a second. Uh, if you're gonna make a big change like that, in, in, in your village, in your life, it's also important to get wise counsel yes. mm -hmm. to surround you, yeah. right. um, to have accountability, yeah. some, some actionable steps to say, okay, you want to get better, you wanna make a change, then every time you want to try to revert back to who you used to be, right. somebody's yeah. calling that out so mm -hmm. that it's making you that I better. Really that accountability. Yes. Yeah. 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 And I think it's important, you have to be willing to change. Like Ashley said, you have to have courage. Because there's a lot of people that want to change, but they're afraid to. Right. But you also have to have that desire to change. I mean, not always. Like, 
not always is your village just completely toxic and you need to get up and like move to another country. Sometimes your village <laughs> is great, and but maybe you're not where you want to be. Maybe you want to be something more in life, kind of like if you're, I don't know, a secretary and you want to be the office manager. Like you have to surround yourself with the people that are at next levels that can yeah. help you grow. They can teach you what you need to learn to get to those next levels. Because, I mean, we tend to attract who we are. Mm -hmm. So if you look around at your village, yeah. and maybe it's a that little That might bit hurt a little bit. <laughs> oh, that was good. <laughs> happy people tend to hang out with happy people. That's right. Very rarely do you see happy people with, like, you know, grumpy Negative. people. Yeah. <laughs> but if you look around and you're not maybe happy with the environment that you're in, maybe it's time to look at yourself and think, what do I need to change? Mm -hmm. And who do I need to ask? Because sometimes if your village is, like I said, it's a decent village, there's not really anybody that you need to kick out of it. Sometimes you just need to add somebody, like a mentor, another mom, a grandma. She's already been there. She's done raised her kids, and she may be helping raise, <laughs> been there you know, her. Mm -hmm. You have your mom helping and co you. And co-workers. <laughs> co-workers. <laughs> co-workers. So I just don't want people to get the idea that if you're stuck in your village, that means everybody has to go. Because no. that's normally not true. Right. Yeah. So this next question is kind of two parts, uh, but we'll start with the first question here. How can you be a productive village member? How can you be productive helping others or, or in a village? So for me, I think the best way for me to be productive right now, in my village I have my sister who has an eight-year-old son, Caleb, my nephew who I love. Shout out Caleb. Caleb. He's, he's not in the room. He's somewhere else, um, damn kids or something. Um, so he's, um, what I like to be productive part of that village is I feel like his personality is very similar to mine, whereas my sister, her personality is different. So I feel like sometimes it's hard for him and her to understand each other. So then I step in as Titi, like, let me translate what everyone is saying. And I feel like I can be a help to her, because I don't know, moms out there, have you ever felt like you just don't understand your kid? Like, why? Why are you jumping on the couch Absolutely. that way? I don't understand. <laughs> so there's certain things sure. where I'll step in and say, maybe he's viewing it this way, because when I was eight, I did this, and we have those conversations, which I think is helpful. And I think I just, for me, I'll try to just offer whatever I have to help out. So you want to go on a date? I can stay and hang out with him. I'll babysit. That's fine. Um, another thing I do, I offer, I'm a graphic designer, so I'll make graphics for my friends and family. If they have a birthday coming up, they need a slide, that kind of a thing. They need a, a wedding invitation, their pictures. I've done things for people in Shameless my village. Shameless sales pitch right there. Just saying. <laughs> Adriana at familychurchny.com. Okay, so, but I'll just, for me, I just offer something because I believe that there is a power in just simply offering and saying, hey, um, there was one couple that I knew their anniversary was coming up, and I just thought about it. I said, do you want me to watch your kid on Thursday night so you guys can go on a date? And the woman just started crying and was like, we didn't know who to ask, but we didn't want to bother anyone. And I, I'll just, I'm free. I'm, mm -hmm. I have no kids. Or I, you know, so yeah. I figured offering whatever you do have is, is a really good way to be productive. That's great. I feel like that's such a good point because there's the power of the offer, like she said. But for me, I had to learn to exercise the power of the ask. So mm -hmm. for... Yeah, because it's a little different. And it's, so it's say that again. There's two sides. There's the power of what? There's the power of the offer, and then there's the power of the ask. So being willing to ask one of your village members, or if they weren't a village member, now they just became one yeah. because right. you reached out. Yeah, yeah. Um, and for me, it was my daughter. She would sing happy birthday to all of our family members, and she has this sweet little voice. I'm a mom. I'm saying she has a sweet voice. If anybody else hears her, <laughs> and it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Little bias. All right. She would sing happy birthday to everyone. And for her birthday, I'm not on praise and worship because I can't sing. Why don't you sing for us? Huh? Let us hear it. Let Is this someone's it, birthday in here? Show sure enough. Put your hand up if it's your birthday. Anybody's birthday? Anybody's birthday? All right. No, okay, I'll wrong. sing to you for Saturday. All right, ready? <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday. <laughs> Yeah. To you. No, let's move on. Let's move on because our Facebook ratings just went down. 
<laughs> okay, so I didn't want to do that to my daughter. So what I did is I know somebody who is on the worship team, and I'm not going to say her name, but it's Shauna. She's over there. <laughs> and Shauna came and sang for my daughter's birthday, and it had to be the most powerful moment that she's ever had for her birthday, and she'll remember that forever. So yeah. that's the power of the ask. That's good. Power of the ask. That's good. Mm -hmm. So, so then the second side of this, and let's, let's talk to the singles. How can a single person, someone who doesn't have children, how can they contribute to a village of, of, of families or, or moms and dads? I'm going to take this one to you guys. <laughs> okay, so real quick, I want to say that this is something that I believe can be a struggle. You know, we've been talking about struggling. Because as a single person, I don't think it's always welcomed to give and contribute certain things. Advice or... Yeah, because sometimes it's like, well, you don't have kids, so you don't know. Or you you're know? not married, you don't understand. Yeah. Or you're not living what I'm going You're not getting up at 3 o'clock in the morning feeding these kids. <laughs> <You'll> <laughs> exactly. <know that. laughs> so I feel like that's something that can be a, a, a struggle that we have, mm -hmm. for me at least, that I don't always feel like you want to hear what I have to say. So yeah. I don't always want to, even though I'm sitting there like, oh, I think that I could help you in this situation. But sometimes it's just hard to like, offer that. Like, I'll do it with my sister, that's my sister. But when I see the rest of the village, it's kind of a struggle. Your kid me. is walking across the table. Uh, oh, maybe that's I, not I a good idea. Because I'm not a mom, so <laughs> I shouldn't take him off the table. Like, <laughs> well, I do want to mention, though, at the lunch table the other day, you were talking about how she contributed yeah, to um, you. I think that it's important for single people to know that you're not just a babysitter. Because I feel like sometimes <laughs> that's where you fall into. Yeah. You know, like, oh, they ain't got no life. They can watch my kids on Friday. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> or it's not the case. Uh -oh. Like, I was talking one day about something that I was dealing with with one of my kids, and Adriana started talking to me about a very similar situation that she was dealing, that she dealt with in high school. And it spoke to me. And it wasn't like I went to Adriana for advice. We were just eating dinner outside and wound up having this conversation. And I think that's important, that you're never going to realize how you affect somebody in the moment, and you may not never know, but you do affect somebody. Yeah. Yeah. And the Bible talks about the older teaching the younger, and that doesn't necessarily just mean, you know, a wife with 2.5 kids. Like, that's just anybody. Anybody who has experience. Yeah, anybody who has experience, experience yeah. in something or knowledge in something. Right. So, like, as a single person, you could be helping, you could help teach my kid to read, if that's your thing, or... Help with the party planner. Sassy can throw a crazy party. You know, <laughs> another party, Bianca. <laughs> another like shameless sales pitch here at Family Tree. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got the I mean, she doesn't actually have a business. I'm just saying. My kids have Same had some there. great parties. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I think that's great to hear mm -hmm. that um, Cindy was open to receive from somebody who was not a mom, mm -hmm. who's not a wife, um, but she was open to receive insight um, because she's learning. Every single day in a village, every single person in this room, we're learning. Yeah. Um, and I want to encourage everyone to be open to learn from people, maybe who are not in your same situation, because I think when you're in it sometimes, you can't always see clearly. Yeah. Yeah. So allowing people to speak into you. Obviously, there's going to be times where you're like, you take the good, you take the bad, you know? Mm -hmm. Fact so of life. Yes, yeah. true thing. <laughs> yeah, that but it's important to be open to receive. Um, Ronnie Doss was here one time, and he talks about putting your white belt on, right? right? Um, yeah. Talking about um, in not karate, being, karate terms. Karate terms, yeah. Not being the smartest person in the room, but being willing to always learn. Mm -hmm. um, being teachable. Good. Yeah, teachable. Yeah, that's, that's teachable. good. Let me ask this question. This is another two-parter. Um, I think the second question is easier to answer especially when you're trying to reflect on your parenting skills. So this one might be harder to answer. Mm -hmm. Name an area that you feel that you excel at in motherhood, that, you're, that you do a great job in this one area in motherhood, and I know that can be a hard one to answer. Um, this one I had to think about for a minute because, like you said, I think we can all think of like 10 things that we could be better at, mm -hmm. just struggling to think of like the one thing that we're really good at. Mm -hmm. So the one thing that I'm great at now, which I wasn't always great at. Hallelujah. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> is apologizing to my kids. Hmm. I grew up old school. I'm sure pretty much everybody in my even just age bracket probably grew up similar 
Parents don't apologize to their kids. Their parents didn't apologize to them. I can't think of one of my friends who had parents that really apologized to them. It's not throwing shade, it's just the way we were raised. It's the way yeah. it was. Right. And I didn't realize until I had just gotten married with Michael that I could not apologize. Could sometimes. not. <laughs> sometimes it Even when like asked, <laughs> just please. <laughs> just, are, are you wrong? Yes, I'm wrong. Then just please say you're sorry. I Aww. literally could. I would have rather like had the floor open up and swallow me whole. <laughs> no. But I realized that it wasn't probably the best way <laughs> to go about things. And I wanted it to be easier for my kids. So I made a point since they were little, whenever I you know, came out my face, maybe said something I shouldn't have, acted a little bit too extra, I would go back and apologize to them. That's good. Mm -hmm. Or I would, like if I was just having a rough day and I knew that it was gonna probably end badly, I would try to preemptively like, all right, mommy's gonna need your help today. <laughs> I'm in a bad, you know, I'm in a rough mood, I need your help. And doing that consistently, Every time, and even now that my kids are teenagers, sometimes I'll just shoot them a text like, my bad, that was uncalled for. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I can see in my children that it's easier for them to apologize because they'll do the same. They'll shoot me a text like, sorry, mom, or they'll come downstairs and it's like, I'm sorry. Hey, let me jump in on that real quick. Um, and we've made some agreements in the house too, not to throw shade on each other, mm -hmm. but like, if she feels like she's getting somewhere, or I feel like she's getting some way to the kids, yeah. I'll give her like a little look like, and I'm not trying to put her down, I'm not trying to correct her, mm -hmm. it's right. just, you said you didn't want to do this, yeah. mm -hmm. right. and we're there right now, mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. and then she'll give me the same kind of look that I don't want back. But. <laughs> He's before, being a productive village member. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. that is. A I wanted to also answer um, what I excel at. I really take pride in being present with my children, being in the moment. And, it, you know, it's easy to get caught up with laundry, dishes, sometimes work that I may have brought home. But I, I like to, it, it takes a mind shift. And, hey. and even hey. though I might have those things to do, it's, it's really shifting your mind and saying, what, what can I do? I can, I can cook with my kids. They love to clean. I can Ooh, teach them yes. how to fold laundry. Yes. They, do. they have a song and everything. It's great. <laughs> yes. So it, it's it's shifting. It. It's all about your attitude. So I can I can get frustrated and oh, I have all this stuff to do. And, and and it's important to us also not to be on our phones a lot. Mm -hmm. I think that's yeah. really important, especially with how technology is today. So that's something that I that I'm still working on, but I think I do a pretty good. Yeah, job we know that. that we know we want to capture the moment, but yes. you really don't want every one of your kids' memories of you behind your phone. Right? Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, you want the moment on video, but at the same time, they want your attention as well. Okay, mm -hmm. so we have two more questions. We've got six minutes. Name an area that you struggle with. So let's identify something that's happening with someone else in the room. What area do you struggle with? I, to go back to what Ashley's answer that she excels in, um, I apparently suck at it. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, that being in the moment is a struggle for me because I tend to be very task oriented, and I'm like, all right, I'm going home, I'm starting dinner, I have to throw in the load a lot, and I have like a list of things that I need to do, you know, and Liam needs help with his homework, blah, blah, blah. And in my head, like those things can get done or have to get done before I can like relax and enjoy myself. Hmm. And with kids, they don't have a timetable like that. Like you could be in the middle of whatever and they come in and they want your attention in that moment. Yeah. So I try, and I sometimes I fail, sometimes I do it great, but I try to stop and like listen to them, or if I'm in the middle of something that I can't stop, I at minimum try to be like, all right, Liam, give me 10 minutes, and I'll put like an alarm on my phone to remind me so that yeah. way it's not two hours later. Um, but that's still something that I really try to work because it doesn't come natural to me. To me, I want to get my list done, and then I could be you know, free to do whatever. I tend to think I can do everything. <laughs> Some people may call it controlling. Um, no, I, honestly, I, I love to be needed. So I think it goes to treating people the way that I want to be treated. Yeah. And I'll, I'll tell you a quick story. This last weekend, my washer wouldn't drain. And my husband was very respectful and honoring and gave me the opportunity to fix it. But really what ended up happening Did you get your tool belt? I don't have Did a, you put two belt on? box, but oh. <laughs> she said, let's what go. What ended up happening was after watching a very detailed YouTube video and 
making a couple <laughs> phone calls. I attempted it. Uh, we ended up, my husband got a, a washer, which works beautifully. Um, thank, you. thank you. Big win, Breeze. Big you. win, brother. Yes. But I, I realized that this is an opportunity to embrace my unique brilliance. What am I good at? What am I not good at? And this is an opportunity for me to reach out, whether it be to someone in my village, whether that be Home Depot. Amen. Make that yeah. repairman. Uh, <laughs> But allowing, allowing my village to help, and, and, and that would give me more time with my children and friends. Yeah. Uh, something, something that I struggled with was communication. So, quick story. Every night, my daughter would ask me, hey, mom, how old are you? And I would be like, all right, Paris, I'd tell her my age, 27. And the next night, she would ask me again, how old are you? And over and over and over, she would ask me every night before we went to bed, how old are you? And I'd be like, Paris you know how old I am. Why do you always ask me this question? And she goes, Mom, because I don't know what else to say. <laughs> and in that moment, I had to be present. She didn't know how to start a conversation. Yeah. She didn't know how to start a conversation. She just wanted to talk to me. And it just, my struggle kind of created a solution because now every time I want to talk to Paris, I go over to Paris and I say, hey, Paris, how old are you? Yeah. And when I tell you, she <laughs> puts her iPad down, and she looks at me, and she says, Mom, what do you want to talk about? Aww. That's so cute. And let me tell you, <laughs> let me tell you really quick. Grandma tried it, because I told her the story. So she tried it. So she was like, hey, Paris, how old are you? And she was like, uh-uh, Grandma, not today. It's a me and mom thing. <laughs> mommy. Uh -uh. That's for mommy only. <laughs> we don't do that. <laughs> so, can yeah. I just tag on to that really quick? Um, in that moment, it just kind of reminded me to kind of say, your children are a part of your village as well. Uh -huh. yeah. Like, I think a lot of the times we tend to, as mm. adults or as parents, we tend to just be like, okay, um, I'm telling you what to do. This is how things are going. Mm. But I think if we stop, I have the opportunity to be a part of your villages in a way because I get to be with your kids on a Sunday morning. But if we stop, take some time to listen to what they have to say, I think we can learn something from them. Yeah. Um, we can learn how to communicate a little bit better. They have this, this, this way about them that everything is just so simple. Yeah. And I think as we get older, we tend to complicate a little bit. So I'm going to encourage you to pause, take the moment, stop, right. and listen, and learn a little bit of something from That's good. Yeah. So yes, Cindy, Cindy has a nickname for Sessie, Miss Sessie, uh, called, she's the Pied Piper of kids. Uh, just, you'll find a group of kids around her wherever she goes, but probably because she will stop and ignore adults and listen to kids. Yeah. Um, and, and remember, that's what Jesus said, right? He said, Do, suffer not the little children to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus took time out, he would kneel down, and he would pay attention and give an ear to the kids, right? Last question, running out of time. Before we close out today, is there anything you want to share with the moms or the people in this room about their village, how to experience a better village, a better life, somebody? I'd say make the effort. And when I say that, I mean, I'm not somebody that makes friends easy. I like to laugh and joke and talk a lot when I'm in a comfortable situation. Mm -hmm. But if you put me in an uncomfortable wanna. situation, like if I go to a party where you're the only person that I know, I most likely will hang out by like the food table. <laughs> <laughs> snacks. <laughs> <Please. laughs> Having snacks and a drink, like kind of minding my own business. And I'm, I mean, I like to think I'm a pretty friendly person, but I'm not really an outgoing person and there's a difference. Yes. And so, what happens when you're like that is that you'll go back home and you didn't really speak to anybody. Mm. So make the effort. It's important to get to know people. And you're never really going to know who can be there to help you out if you don't make that effort. Like one time one of my kids got dirty at school and I was away and I was able to call the neighbor, our neighbor Trish, and she was able to go into my house. Like I gave her my code and she went and she got clothes and took it to my daughter where if I had never made the effort to even just get like on a hey, how's it going type conversation, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have had that help for somebody to do that for me. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I'm not saying make the effort because you're going to find, you know, 10 besties at the next 
barbecue that you go to, but you never know who you're going to meet that's going to have some sort of impact in your life. Yeah, that's true. And to help facilitate some of that stuff, on Saturday, June 26th at 10 a.m., we are going to have a sisterhood. Sister. 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 Let's go. So Sister more hood. information will be coming out that and registration and stuff. Ooh. <laughs> I would like to say, um, moms, you we have an incredible responsibility that God has given us. And as Ceci was talking, it made me think, we are training up the future. So to take that time is just a beautiful thing. So I hope we all um, acknowledge what a gift that we have in that. And here at Family Church, we are a, we are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church. We heal hurts. Yep. We build relationships, we develop leaders, <laughs> and we do that through connect groups. So yeah. I'm excited to share with you that in June, we're going to be launching two new groups. One is going to be geared toward mothers in all um, seasons of motherhood, and one's going to be geared towards women. So we'll share that um, with you shortly. But in the meantime, you can also go to the Family Church Center app and check out our groups and events that we have currently running. And that's how we're going to get connected and care for you in such a large environment. We do have men's groups as well, not to <laughs> up the lane, but we do too. Um, again, with COVID, everything got shut down, but everything will be ramping back up in June. Yeah. Yep. And then I have um, probably just two more things to share with you. Um, as I was preparing and getting ready to kind of sit up here and share with these ladies, I came across this um, post from a group I follow called The Mom Economy. And it goes along to say, God created the crafty moms to inspire creativity. He created the tidy moms to inspire comfort. He created the nurturing moms to inspire calm. He created the funny moms to inspire laughter. He created the crunchy moms to inspire health. He created the party planning moms to inspire community. But he didn't create you to be all of them. So stop trying to be all of the moms. Be the mom you were created to be. And then find your village to be the mom you aren't because we are all created to need each other. Now this can go for all of us in the room today, not just moms, not just ladies, it can go for men, it can go for the singles. I want you guys to take a moment, reflect on what you have to offer. What do you do that's great? What's your unique, unique brilliance? What's the thing that you can only do? Think about that. I'll encourage that, that'll be your homework for the day, okay? <laughs> The huh. thing that only you can do. The thing that only you can do. Yeah. At the beginning, we all raised our hands. If you were a single mom, if you were a single, if you were an empty nester, we did that, right? So there's somebody in this room. Each of us have something inside of us. That could be the answer to somebody's problem in this room this morning. So that's something that I'm going to leave you with. And singles, I just want to say, trust yourselves. And maybe life isn't what you thought it was going to be, but it's okay. As humans, we You're have right. a You're brand right. new day each and every day, right? To start and recreate the person that we are. So, Before okay. Ceci starts preaching. It's, <laughs> hey, amen, amen, amen. Thank amen. you. Well, to tag off what you said, I think it's important to know that in our church here, we love the fact that we said like we're diverse and not just in skin color or age, but in gifts and in talents. And one thing we love is opportunity for you to use those gifts and talents. So if you head on over to FamilyChurchNY.com, you can take our Fam Foundations class and you can get plugged in. If you're not currently serving somewhere, there is a place for you to use whatever it is that you're good at. So you don't need to be Fam Kids. We have production team, which is our team, which is our teen group. So we have different areas, whatever your um, good at whatever gifts you have through this class you'll be able to find out your gifts and get plugged and in. And that's a way to connect with other people who have the same sort of talent or the exactly. same sort of hobbies. Yeah so like my production team is some our photographers and so they'll sit and share photos and share things which they may have not got, gotten connected to each other in a church our size until they got that's on good. a team so. It's exciting. Real quick before the giveaway we just want to take a moment to say thank you to Pastor Mike and Miss Cindy. Yes. We love you. Yes. We respect you. We honor you. And we appreciate the opportunity to sit up here and speak to our family. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Did they do a great job today, these ladies? Thank you. All right, as promised, moms, when you walked in, you received a ticket. We would like to do a Mother's Day giveaway. What do we have? What are we giving away? 
We so I, have... I don't know this stuff. Okay. We have the coach bag. Woo! <laughs> With the matching wristlet. Yes. <laughs> a massage at Say La Vie. Okay. Eva ba ba. <laughs> <laughs> and getting your nails done at OC Nails. Very cool. Only moms, right? Huh? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. okay. And second service, I think, has some stuff that's Just a little bit different. Same thing. Okay. Same thing. All right. So, moms, get your tickets out. Let's go. Let's go. Shake it up a little bit. So, get your ticket, get your Josh, ticket. put your ticket away. I know Josh. Josh <laughs> had taken a ticket earlier. <laughs> he was trying to win. Ticket number. Six, four, nine, zero, zero, nine. Number nine. Six, four, zero, nine. Zero, zero, nine. Yeah. Hey! Come on down. Yeah! And so yes, fun. to be outdone, to be outdone, uh, to be outdone, uh, Father's Day, <laughs> love, <laughs> Father's Day, I just had to go wild, all right, so check this out, Father, <laughs> you weren't that excited earlier, Pastor Mike, He's so excited, I'm on the stage now, <laughs> there's a room of people I can act in front of, <laughs> so starting in June, fathers, every service you attend, you will receive a custom family church poker chip. Yes. Hey, Baba. <laughs> it's, it's fair. You, hey, you guys had a handbag. Right, every, every Sunday starting in June, fathers, you will get a family church custom poker chip. As many Sundays as you attend, you will get one. Okay? On Father's Day, when you come in, there will be a game set up in the lobby. So however many tokens you have, you get to try to throw your token into this machine and it will kind of drop down into some sort of, I don't know, I figured it all out we'll yet. See. We'll see, we'll <laughs> see. If you drop into one of those things, at the end of the service, you'll come on stage and compete for the final prizes. We're giving away a Traeger smoker. To yes. cook you dinner, ladies. <laughs> Traeger smoker. We're giving away a Yeti cooler. Yes. No, this is only cool for to me. For all the snacks. For, what? for all the snacks. Nobody's excited about a Yeti cooler, Traeger. Or yeah. Uh, we're going to give away some other stuff. And then there's also party poopers. So if you win those, it's just going to be kind of funny that you just lost uh -huh. in front of everybody. But we want to have a lot of fun. Um, you know, dads, we honor you for what you were able to do leading your families through COVID yeah. uh, and through this season of life. Moms, leading your families, although you may not have thought you did it well every day, every, all the time, maybe you came out of pocket here or there because of stresses, we love you, we honor you, we thank you for yeah. what you've done and how you lead your families. Let's go ahead and pray today. Did I forget anything? Nope. I gotta check with the ladies, because I don't know. <laughs> Father, we come to the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for today. We pray that your word will never return void, but it will accomplish exactly what you set it forth to do. We pray today that moms feel honored. They're going home today refreshed, recharged, knowing that they have a team of people here in their corner, ready to be part of their village at any time that they need support. So Lord, give us the strength and the courage to use the power of the offer and the power of the ask. Yeah, yeah. Help us to be a productive part of other people's villages and help us to contribute to what you're doing on the earth today. We pray that your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As we leave here today, everything we set our hands to will prosper and be successful in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We love you. Offering baskets are at the doors on the way out. Happy Mother's Day.